Here's your news for July 16, 2020. And your headlines for today include WWE SummerSlam plans for Roman Reigns revealed. Recently released NXT superstar appears on AEW Fight for the Fallen. AEW announces six matches for Dynamite next week. WWE is not going Hollywood for WrestleMania next year. Charlotte Flair's Royalty vs. Royalty match. Massive hacking that shocked the wrestling world. WWE and AEW are majorly impacted. Why Tony Schiavone missed AEW Fight for the Fallen? WWE Hall of Famer Sonny might be in jail for a while. Chris Jericho takes massive shots at NXT and more. We're kicking off today with news from SummerSlam, as given the current situation, there's plenty of changes to the biggest party of the summer. Despite not appearing since before WrestleMania, there were hopes within WWE that Roman Reigns would appear at SummerSlam, and now we've learned more about what he would have done. According to Ringside News, Reigns was supposed to be a factor in the Universal title match. As they reported, WWE didn't have a ton of options for their Universal title match at SummerSlam. We've been told Roman factored into two discussed plans versus either Wyatt or Strowman. The only other option was the one they're going with. Looks like Wyatt vs. Strowman 3 at SummerSlam. Given that Roman hasn't returned from his hiatus, it certainly looks like Strowman and Wyatt will clash in August, especially given that this Sunday's swamp fight between the two won't be for the Monster Among Men's Universal title. Of course, you can never count out the WWE pulling a shocking return that only a handful of people are aware of, but for now, that doesn't seem like a possibility. While Strowman will be back eventually, we have no idea when that will be. And until then, fans won't be seeing Reigns face Wyatt, Strowman, or anyone else for quite some time. Over to All Elite Wrestling now as this week's show saw the AEW debut of former NXT superstar MJ Jenkins. Jenkins, who was released from NXT on April 15th, appeared to team with Kenzie Page, though the duo came up short to Brandy Rhodes and Ally. Whilst the match obviously didn't go as Jenkins had hoped, with her taking the pin from Allie, the fact that she was on AEW TV at all is a good sign that she's doing well following her NXT release. Jenkins wasn't the only WWE personality to make their presence known, as at AEW Fight for the Fallen, Nyla Rose introduced her new manager. This new manager was revealed to be Vicky Guerrero, who had plenty of praise for her client and said that the former AEW Women's Champion is going to dominate the competition. It wasn't too long ago that Vicky was blackballed from WWE following her first AEW appearance, but now it looks like she won't be missing out, as she's got a regular role on AEW TV as Nyla Rose's manager. Vicky's appearance was just one part of an epic Fight for the Fallen event, and now AEW is following it up with six matches being announced for next week's Dynamite. As usual, AEW TNT champion Cody will put his title on the line in an open challenge, whilst the Young Bucks will face the Butcher and the Blade in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Hangman Page will have his hands full when he faces five of the Dark Order, and MJF will also be in action against a yet-to-be-named opponent. In tag team action, Chris Jericho and Jake Hager will take on Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, and two stars will be making their AEW Dynamite debut when Ivelisse takes on Diamante. Ivelisse is perhaps best known for her work on Lucha Underground, but also appeared on 2011's Tough Enough and later NXT before being released in 2012. As for her opponent, Diamante has worked for such companies as Impact, where her partner Kiara Hogan currently competes, as well as ICW and Women of Wrestling, and now both women will have the chance to shine on Dynamite. It's a stacked show to say the least, and we'll have to see what NXT will do to respond to next week's show. Back to WWE now, and we all know that WrestleMania 36 didn't take place in Tampa as planned this year due to the ongoing situation, but now WWE is planning to make things up to the big guava. WWE was set to host WrestleMania 37 at the SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, but now that won't be happening, as the show will now be happening in Tampa instead. This move has been a long time coming, as in April, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti stated that large gatherings such as sporting events may not be approved for at least a year, which left fans wondering whether WWE would be able to host WrestleMania. 
A source within WWE said that the company wanted Mania 37 to move to Tampa to keep Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in the fold, especially since he's allowed WWE to keep working by deeming it an essential business shortly after Linda McMahon promised $18.5 million to Florida from a super PAC. Perhaps WrestleMania will go Hollywood in 2022, but for now, fans can expect Tampa to finally get the biggest show of the year, albeit a year late. One person who knows how it feels to headline WrestleMania is Charlotte Flair, who spoke recently about an idea she had that never made it to TV. Appearing on the Bellas podcast recently, the trio discussed possible storylines to bring the Queen back to TV after her current hiatus, and Flair said she had expressed a desire to work with Stephanie McMahon and was also hoping to work in a storyline with Triple H during this year's return to NXT. She said, Because I spent time in NXT recently, I was really hoping I could get into it with Triple H, being like the brat and him being like, I made you, maybe later down the road. Since losing the NXT Women's Championship to Io Shirai, Flair has departed NXT and returned to Raw, but recently opted to take some time off to get some surgery sorted. Now that she's not on NXT, it looks unlikely that the feud with Triple H will happen, but if she is ever to return to the gold brand, the Queen of All Eras versus the King of Kings would be an interesting angle. Over to Impact now and this Saturday, the company will host its Slammiversary pay-per-view, which has seen plenty of ex-WWE superstars teased for the show. Now, Don Callis has continued to tease some big debuts on this weekend's show, as during an Impact Wrestling Aftershock show with Jimmy Jacobs, he commented on dealing with mosquitoes so big you need a machine gun to take care of them and gave a knowing look to the camera. This is, of course, in reference to Carl Anderson's nickname outside of WWE, and this follows on from reports that both Anderson and Luke Gallows have already signed a deal with Impact. Given that the pair's talk in Shopamania was filmed last week, and that their non-compete clause with WWE ended yesterday, it's entirely possible that the former Raw Tag Team Champions could appear this Saturday, and if rumors are to be believed, that's exactly what's going to happen. Now this week, Twitter was hit by one of its biggest hacks of all time, with major accounts like Elon Musk, Kanye West, and Jeff Bezos all trying to engage followers to take part of a Bitcoin scam. Given that the hackers netted over $100,000 in a few hours according to Wired, Twitter's security made it so a bunch of verified accounts were unable to tweet, including both AEW and WWE's official accounts, as well as the verified WWE NXT account. To get around this, WWE used an old temporary account for NXT to share content, which was then retweeted by their verified account, while the TNT Drama account wasn't blocked from tweeting and assisted AEW through Fight for the Fallen. This wasn't even the only hacking story this week, as Kayla Braxton's Facebook was also hacked, something that she let her friends, fans, and family know via Instagram. Braxton explained that both her personal and verified pages had been hacked, and this is just the latest problem for the WWE broadcaster after testing positive recently for the second time. Hopefully Braxton will be able to get her account back soon, as this is the last thing she needs after such a difficult year. Back to AEW now and this week's Fight for the Fallen didn't have Tony Schiavone appear, but for a very important reason. At the start of the show, Schiavone's absence was addressed, as it turns out that after being tested recently, he didn't get his results back on time. Of course, this doesn't mean that the legendary commentator tested positive, but it was decided not to risk him coming to the show, and he was replaced behind the announcer's desk by Taz. AEW keeps a very strict testing protocol and procedure, as everyone must pass a test before they are permitted to enter their bubble, and fans can expect Shivani to be back behind AEW's commentator's desk if the results come back negative. One person fans won't see in AEW, WWE, or any promotion is Tammy Sitch, who was recently arrested and may not be out for quite some time. After being arrested on multiple charges, including driving with a suspended license, the state of Pennsylvania has filed a motion to revoke Sitch's February 2020 parole, according to PW Insider. The former Sonny was arrested this past Monday and remains incarcerated at Monmouth County Correctional Facility, where she has no bond set. Sitch's list of charges include driving with a suspended license, eluding an officer, and a violation of a domestic violence restraining order. This latest arrest comes after Sitch was released in February following a near-year-long stint in prison and reportedly started making over 100 grand a month on her OnlyFans page. 
This venture will certainly dry up if she has another lengthy prison sentence, and it looks like the original WWE diva will be spending plenty more time behind bars. Back to the ring now, and during the past few weeks, NXT has gotten the better of AEW in the battle for viewers, including both nights of the Great American Bash and Fighter Fest going to the gold brand. On this week's Dynamite, Chris Jericho directly addressed this situation, referring to himself as the king of ratings, a reference to how much better Dynamite is doing over NXT in certain demographics. Le Champion went one step further, referring to himself as the Demo God before turning his attention to Orange Cassidy, and it'll be interesting to see whether NXT or WWE has a response to these barbs by the inaugural AEW World and WWE Undisputed Champion. Speaking of NXT, we're focusing on Adam Cole next, as ever since he lost the NXT Championship, there's been plenty of speculation about what the future is for the Undisputed Era. Recently, other news outlets reported that the group was offered a spot on the company's main roster, but according to Ringside News, this has been blasted as fake news. According to their source within the company, nobody in the group was offered a spot on either Raw or SmackDown, and added that being offered spots on the main roster isn't how the company works. Instead, the source explained that the company assigns a superstar a brand, and it's up to the superstar themselves to make it work. Perhaps one day fans will get to see the Undisputed Era, or at least some of its members on either Raw or SmackDown, but one thing we know for sure is that none of the gold brand stars were offered a spot on the main roster. And we're ending today with news from a person who fans may not be seeing much on the main roster soon, Kyrie Sane, as there's been some big questions about what her future holds. Recently, it was reported that Sane was going to be working as WWE's ambassador in Japan, which would allow her to spend more time with her husband. But those rumors faced scrutiny when Sane recently returned on Raw. Despite the Kabuki Warrior even issuing a challenge to her tag partner in Raw Women's Champion Asuka, a translated article from Tokyo Sports has reported that the plan is still for Sane to return to Japan, and the plan remains for Sane to work closely with the company in some capacity. Interestingly, the article stated that some sort of announcement regarding Sane's future will be made before SummerSlam, though when Tokyo Sports reached out to WWE Japan, they said they hadn't heard anything about it. It's no secret that WWE is looking to start an NXT Japan brand, which is proving to be easier said than done given the current situation, and even if Sane isn't able to help out with the proposed gold show, she'd certainly be useful for the company in other ways. Ways. 